Today I'm flying to Las Vegas with Virgin Atlantic. I'll be in upper class, their business class cabin, on a Boeing 787-9 aircraft. Upper class passengers can arrive at the exclusive upper class wing. At the barrier they just needed a flight number and the full passenger name to gain access. A porter welcomed you and took your luggage through to the check-in desk. It was at this point I discovered the US authorities had selected me for secondary search at the gate. This was denoted by a line of S's on my boarding pass. After check-in, it was a short walk to the private security channel, which was deserted. After security, there was a long walk through Duty 3 and the main departure lounge to get to the Virgin Atlantic Clubhouse. This lounge is available for everyone travelling upper class together with Virgin Atlantic Flying Club Gold members. I'm not sure I'd want to exercise on a peloton bike just before a long flight. There was a deli counter and table service of hot food and drinks. I opted for the chicken burger and a glass of rosé champagne. If you're liking this video, please do subscribe to the channel. From the lounge it was a short 5 minute walk to gate 26. priority line was provided for upper class passengers, but there were no queues. I was shown straight to secondary search where the friendly agents just wanted to swab everything for explosives. It was no big deal. The flight was on a Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner, registration GV-OOH, called Mischief. It was seven years old. Onto the plane and the upper class cabin had 31 seats, all with direct aisle access. I was in seat 5A. A pack of spare face masks was on the seat, but no amenity kit. I don't know whether they just forgot to put them out, or if it was a cost-cutting measure. The standard champagne, juice or water were offered pre-departure.
Hello there. We're delighted to welcome you on board Virgin Atlantic. Thank you for flying with us today. You're no doubt keen to lose yourself in our dazzling world of entertainment. And thanks for watching. The aircraft pushed back about 20 minutes behind schedule to taxi across the airport to runway 9 right. The flight time to Las Vegas was due to be 10 hours and 45 minutes. A feature of the Dreamliner is the self-dimming windows. Shortly after takeoff, the drinks trolley arrived. And then it was time for the meal service. For starter, there was a choice of hot smoked salmon or grilled asparagus. Main courses included breaded chicken breast with potato terrine, wilted greens and parsley sauce, or garlic and ginger prawns in a Thai green curry sauce. It wasn't a particularly good selection of food and I wouldn't recommend the prawns. For dessert there was a choice of passion fruit and chocolate dome or apple and blackberry crumble. Finally, a cheese plate and glass of port were served. There was a modest selection of wines available. The entertainment screen folded out from beside the seat.
there was a good range of films on offer, although it missed anything particularly new. But that's more about studios not releasing films during the pandemic. At the rear of the cabin were two washrooms. Also at the rear of the cabin was the upper class bar. Virgin appears to have stopped setting the bar up during flights, with the crew bringing drinks from the forward galley. Despite it being a flight to Las Vegas, the bar didn't get much use during the flight. Fortified by a couple of drinks, a visit to the economy and premium cabins ensued. During the latter part of the flight, the seatbelt signs were on for long periods, with the crew also instructed to take their seats at one point. A second meal was served 90 minutes prior to landing. I opted for the warm crab cakes, which were an improvement on the main meal service. We came into land on runway 25 left and then taxied to the E-Gates. We arrived about 15 minutes behind schedule. 